hello beautiful people welcome back to my channel thanks for stopping by family today we're going to make banku mix and it's the mixture of kondo and cassava dough if you want to get the proper fermented ghana banku mix then please stay tuned till the end and let me take you through my simple process and i hope you like it let's begin i'm going to first make the corn dough yeah and i have two kg of white homini corn here i'm going to wash them nicely removing all the dirt and all the starch yeah so that we can get a proper and beautiful corn dough yeah so now i've brought all the corn into the sink area and i'm washing them as you all can see i'm doing a thorough clean here i'll make sure i remove all the bad corns leaving all the good ones in the bowl yeah and after that i'll leave them to sit for about 20 minutes to soften up and to reduce the amount of starch we have in the corn yeah now you can see the water we have here is a bit clearer than the one we had before that is we've been able to take care of the starch and now it's time for us to let the corn ferment for about three to four days before we blend them now i'll take them out of the sink for them to ferment when the time is up i'll wash and clean them nicely again before i blend them three days later they are here and well rinsed and i can smell these corns have already started fermenting and the corns i'm going to process first are like dry sort of so we're going to get something like a corn flour okay and i'll show you how to use your corn flour to make bank mix yeah and we are using the food processor i will again show you how to use your blender to make your corn dough yeah so keep watching because this video is a little bit detailed so if you're interested watch till the end be inspired and henceforth make your own banku mix using your blender or food processor and it's that easy and simple to make at home so our first method is done that's the corn flour we're going to set it aside and continue making our corn dough using the blender yeah and this looks beautiful i love the texture yeah our homemade corn flour is done and it's that simple you can as well leave it in the sun for it to really really dry well to get that crispy feel or effect yeah so we're going to use our blender to make the next method okay so keep watching and go nowhere family don't forget to like share comment on the video and i will appreciate it okay i'm adding water and it's going to be a little bit above the corn level yeah and it's also for easy blending we are blending them until they are nice and smooth all right and this is our second method it's nicely blended so next thing is to transfer everything into the bowl and because we want to get the dough and not the runny butter like this what we're going to do is to let it sit somewhere in a dry and cool place for about six hours to a day for all the water to settle up while the corn dough obviously will remain down below and yeah so family let's set it aside and very soon we see the results yeah again we're going to use a blender to make the third method this time around i'll use a little bit of water because i don't want it to be runny when i finish blending then you will know the difference between this one and the second method yeah one thing is that with this method if your blade is not that good then don't try it go for the second method or else you break your blades all right because we are going for a thicker consistency and not all blades are strong enough to do the job because it's a little bit of a struggle for some of the blades or blenders as a whole okay so we are done blending and i love how the appearance is is smooth just as i want it now let's transfer everything into the bowl okay so far we have our corn flour which is the first one made with the food processor and the second one which we are still waiting for the water to settle at the top whilst the dough remains underneath and now this is the third one we've got the 
perfect consistency for our dough. It's so smooth as well, and I love it. Now let's transfer our corn dough into the bowl. Even though right now your corn dough is ready and can be used for banku, um, kenke, your porridge, but remember we haven't gotten the fermented taste yet. Okay, family. So if you want to see how I'll ferment my corn dough and cassava dough, then stay till the end and be inspired. All right. Now we are on our fourth method, where I've added water to the corns to process them into a smooth paste to get my corn dough straight away like the just ended method which is the third method okay like the blender you can as well use your food processor to get your paste one time straight away just like so and it's so smooth can you see it wow so our corn dough is done in a short time at home with no stress using food processor or blender so now you can use any of these four methods to make your corn dough at home with no stress and i hope you've been inspired right now i'm going to put all of them together but before that we need to check on our second method to drain all the water out to get our dough and here it is and can you see the bubbles on top of the water that means it's already fermenting so we don't want it to ferment so much yet. So let's drain all the water out to get our dough. So if your blender is not that strong enough, you can use this method to get your homemade corn dough done. Now let's use kitchen towel to help absorb all the excess water out. Just like this. Better still, you can as well transfer all of these into a cheesecloth for all the excess water to drip out gradually and especially when it's in bulk but today since it's not that much i prefer to use kitchen towel yeah all done and now look our condo is done beautiful i'm going to put them together as i said i love the texture of it can you see that and this is the third one i made with the blender using less water now you see they are the same which means you can make your own condo at home using any of these methods and you will be good. Isn't this beautiful, family? Don't forget to like, share, comment on the video and I will appreciate it. Next, we're going to make our cassava dough and the cassavas are already in water, yeah? They've been there for about five days and I've started fermenting already. I'm going to peel off the skin and guys, we will continue from there. Keep watching if you want to see how I make my homemade bank mess. Yeah? This cassava looks good and so nice. And as you can see, it's not that bad yet. So we're just going to peel off the skin. And if it actually has gotten bad to be that yellowish or brownish, Mostly that is used for konkonte. Yeah, we don't waste cassava in Ghana. <laughs> when cassava is not well preserved, it gets dried up quickly and goes bad. To preserve your cassava, you have to put them in water. And this method has been in existence from the olden days and is still useful to some of us. In addition, this method speeds up fermentation process, yeah? But to preserve them for a longer period of time, then you have to peel off their skins, cut them into smaller pieces or any size of your choice, and put them in your freezer. That is the best way to preserve your cassava for a longer period of time. Next is to cut our cassava into pieces and blend them smoothly and nicely. Alright? And family, I've already shown you two ways of making cassava dough without blender or food processor. I will leave the link in the description box below. Check it out for your own convenience, all right? The next thing to do is to blend them until they are all nice and smooth, okay? So that, add a little bit of water for easy blending here. Yeah? Ooh, 
we've now got our smooth banner. So let's set it aside and focus on the making of our bangu mix here. Yeah? So now we have our corn flour. And just as cornstarch, it can also be used as thickening agents for our stews, soups, sauces, desserts, and so many more. Okay. So now I'm going to be also adding my cassava flour to the bowl. This is to show you how to make your banku mix with corn flour and cassava flour. Okay. So now I'm going to add water to the corn flour and cassava flour. I will add the water gradually and bit by bit, making sure that they do not become runny, okay? So family, this is how you get your own homemade cassava dough and corn dough in case you buy yourself cassava flour and corn flour. Now to make your banku mix, you have to combine them. And how you combine is by choice and preference. Assuming we divide the cassava dough into two, some people will prefer to have all the two added to their corn dough. Others will also prefer half of the cassava dough added to their corn dough. So it's by choice and preference, yeah? So now family, I'm mixing all the corn dough we made together. Remember them? I made them with different methods. I'm sure you still remember. Just check them out. All of them are nicely made and look so beautiful. I'm going to mix all of them together. And after that, family, you ferment them to get the proper Ghanaian banku mix here. And if you want to see how I will ferment it, then please go nowhere and keep watching here. Yeah? transferring my cassava paste or should I say butter into the bowl then after that I'll start mixing it up with my corn dough gradually and bit by bit and if you look at it closely you can see my cassava dough is about one third of the corn dough and that's how much of cassava dough I want to have in my banku mix you can add more or even less okay depending on how you want your banku to feel and taste yeah you can as well ferment only your corn dough to make your kinky yeah and i can't wait to share my recipe with you all finally our homemade banku mix is done and i love the ratio how much cassava dough and corn dough i used and i can't wait to make my banku with it for you all to see family it's not time to ferment our banku mix okay I'm going to transfer everything into a different bowl because this bowl right here is very, very busy in my house, yeah? Make sure to level it up nicely, leaving no gap in it so that it doesn't grow fungus, yeah? Just like this. And after that, I'm going to cover it up with my cling film so tightly, yeah, just like so. Next, I will leave it in a dry and cool place to ferment. And mine took about exactly a month to ferment properly. You can take less or even more, okay? And now after a month, we are back. And look, I love how it's fermented. Unfortunately, I've lost the footage and I would have loved to show you how it was all looking like before breaking them apart and scraping off some of the yellowish um, color that was formed around and on top of my banku mix. It's unfortunate. But this is how it's all looking like in the end and I love the smell. I'm going to preserve them by transferring everything into a food bag and keeping them in my freezer. Whenever I want to make my banku, I just go for my banku mix, add water to it, strain them again and make my banku. This is so beautiful. Wow, family, I hope you have been inspired. Please don't forget to like, share, comment on the video, and I will appreciate it. Please don't forget to recommend this channel to friends and families who may like my recipes. And if it's your first time here, you are warmly welcome. Please subscribe 
to join this amazing family and you will not regret it. For more of my videos, please follow me on Instagram, like my Facebook page, follow me as well on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel for us to build this amazing family together. Thank you all for watching till this point. See you all again in my next video. Until then, stay blessed, stay safe, be good, take care and enjoy. Kiss. Bye, y'all.